Okay, so I'm gonna do the sky. It's gonna be dry brush so I can leave the volume of the white clouds. With painting clouds, you want to have hard and soft edges, and usually the harder edges are gonna be up on top where there's a high contrast between the blue sky and the white cloud. But you don't want complete hard edges because then it's gonna look like a sky full of cotton balls. You want to kind of soften some of those edges. Then I'm going to slip over and I'm going to draw the tree branches in a light gray, probably a cool gray. And later I can come back in and, and uh, paint the negative shapes created by the foliage of the tree and I will probably change colors and values of the tree limbs because uh, when you look at the reference photo, it's not all one color. There's, you know, variations there, as you would expect. Next, I will probably lay in this light yellow uh, lily pad, the yellow-green lily pad area, and you'll notice that the grass area is probably a cooler green and the trees are a little bit warmer. So the, uh, as a result of orange, reds, earth tones mixed in with the greens. Jean Doby says this in her book. And the reason she uses viridian and thalo is because they are really pure greens, unlike most of the tubes, which are the convenience colors, which are usually combinations of different colors. So she's because of the fact that she's going to be combining more colors, she doesn't want to end up with mud. So it's easier to end up with mud on some of those other greens if you're to mix in, you know, reds and uh, oranges and earth tones. Once I have that in there, and I, then I'll probably come in and I'll do a yellow-green mixture down here for the lily pads, and I'm going to get color flowing. So this is all going to be wet into wet. So I see a lot of red in here, but it's going to be probably more pink because I don't want it to go real dark. That's house painting. Mark making is... You know, don't want to get too fussy. I said I was going to mingle color. I should stick to my word here. So I'm going to drop a lot of Quinn Gold in here. Maybe a little elsewhere here. And then we're going to work on uh, putting the water in. And while I'm putting the some of the water back here, it's going to be the pretty much the sky color. And I'm going to drop these uh, greens into the water to have a nice um, wet into wet look. And I'm going to try to get them coming down in vertical lines, which is sometimes hard to do, but we'll see how that, if you let the, let it dry a little bit and then use a little more concentrated pigment, you can get those verticals in there. You can go back into the sky and reinforce some of those hard edges and soften anything that you don't like. You probably want more soft edges than you do hard edges. Uh, then we'll be putting the water in here and it's basically the same process as, as the sky, only we're probably gonna be using a little darker blue, painting around the clouds, I didn't mention that I'll be using like a cerulean blue and a, a burnt sienna probably. And to get the gray, I'll do the same thing here, but it's gonna be a darker gray, darker blue. I'll put the same green down in here. Any of these highlights, I'll probably come back 
I could paint around them, but I don't want to do that. I'll probably just come back and put these in with gouache. And then I'll start, I'll probably indicate some lily pads. They're going to be painted a darker green or a darker red or a darker whatever color. And then I'll be working in the negative space of this dark blue to create what looks to be a floating surface of lily pads. Then at the very final stage, I'm going to go in with a phthalo blue mixture and we're going to create shadows across the lily pads and then in the in the lower sections of the tree and then across the lily pads and hopefully that will give us a nice painting.